Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to this stream. There's a lot to unpack with this particular story, so I hope you guys are ready to listen and digest a lot of information in a short amount of time, okay? Now, at 4.44 a.m. on Saturday, May 23rd of 2020, which was just a week ago, an unknown caller requested police in Stockton, California, which is where this story comes out of, they asked that they perform a welfare check at the home of a man by the name of Billy Williams, his wife, Takesha Williams, and their six children. I know that is a lot to I know that is a lot to take in in a short amount of time, okay? But here's the catch about this particular man, because I actually got a little bit confused. That's the biological father on the right-hand side. And again, his name is Billy Williams. If you guys are wondering why that name sounds familiar, it's because it sounds very much like Billy D. Williams. Well, guess what this man's name is? His name is actually Billy D. Williams, but he's 30 years old. So it's not the same guy at all. How about that? Isn't that crazy? The guy on the right-hand side, his name is Billy D. Williams. That's his real name. He's 30 years old. And he's married to a woman by the name of Takesha Williams. And they together have six children. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six. Six. Let that marinate for a moment. We'll come back to that. Now, let's go ahead and move on with the pictures. Four police officers responded to the home where they discovered the little girl. And what's crazy about this is her name is actually the damn near the exact same as her father. The little girl that you see on my screen right there, her name is Billy Williams. The little girl's name is Billy Williams. That is the beautiful young princess that you see on my screen. The difference is, is her middle name is Simone. So her full name is Billy Simone Williams and she was seven years old. And that little girl that you see on my screen was found in her father's garage. The garage in his house. And she was found unresponsive and covered in multiple bruises put a pin in that we'll come back to it i know i know it's a lot so bear with me sadly paramedics pronounced the little girl by the name of billy simone williams age seven years old dead on the scene her birthday was october the 8th of 2012 and she died may 23rd of 2020 officially so that was like what eight or nine days ago <laughs> Now, upon questioning the adults of the home, which have been the biological mother and biological, or excuse me, the biological father and his wife, because she was not the biological mother of this girl from what I understand, okay? But on, upon a questioning the adults in the home, the officers took Billy's father, who was 30-year-old Billy D. Williams, into custody. He was initially charged with torture, child abuse, and murder. Five other children in the home were taken into custody by Child Protective Services, CPS. Five other children. Take a mental note. The, Cal the Stockton, California police believe that the seven-year-old girl, Billy, was severely abused. A woman on Facebook mentioned the little seven-year-old girl, Billy, in a comment by saying, she was in a class at Oakwood Elementary that I'm a P-A-A-S in. Billy was the sweetest child, always helping others, kind, loving, caring, and this breaks my heart. That's a quote from somebody um, that is involved with that school. Now, an aunt told reporters, my niece was a very good little girl. She was very quiet. She did just what any other kid did. She played in the dirt and whatever. She didn't deserve any of that of what happened to her. 
Now, officers took the father into custody and he, he was booked and processed into the San, oh Lord, Joaquin County Jail. J-O-A-Q-U-I-N. Wa Joaquin, Joe Quinn, I don't know. San Joaquin, I guess. I can't pronounce it if y'all know how to pronounce it. It's J-O-A-Q-U-I-N. He was booked in the jail at the end of the day, all right? Now, he added, people in the home, including the stepmother who lived there, so the stepmother, and the seven-year-old's biological mother, they have been talking to investigators. Now, another member of the family said, soon as the police came, they took him to jail, and then the stepmother, Takesha, who was the who's married to the biological father of this girl, got to stay in the house. But I feel like if you are at the house when the child dies, everybody in the house should go to jail. Do you guys agree with that? Because I personally do. I like that they said that. Now, the family member held a candlelit vigil honoring the seven-year-old girl, Billy, at 6 p.m. on Sunday, May 24th, by placing balloons, flowers, stuffed animals, candles, and pictures, and some poster-sized pictures on and around the garage door of the home on the 1300 block of Candlewood Way where she died. Let me see if I can show you guys that photo. It's not gonna be very big, and we're gonna talk about them here in a moment, okay? Let me see if I can get that like this. That's similar to what it looked like. Well, that's at least a snapshot. I said similar. It's the that is what it looks like. Okay. Now, on May the twenty sixth, a relative posted a photo of a new memorial site at thirteen twenty five East Scotts Avenue, saying they had to move the memorial. Are y'all ready for some fuck shit? I don't know how else to per I don't know how else to say it nicer than that because that's what it is. This is some this is some fuck shit. So I hope you guys are strapped in because this is about to get real crazy, real, real quick. Okay. Now, I want you guys to understand what they had to do was they had to move the memorial for this little girl. So what happened was the memorial was basically on the garage door of the garage where she was found, where she died, that baby. They had to move the memorial to a different location. Do you guys want to take a guess in the dark as to why they had to move the memorial? Anybody want to take a guess? We got time. It's late night. We got time. If you want to take a guess why they had to move the memorial, post it in the chat and let me know what you guys think. Okay. Now, she continued by saying this. They had to move the memorial. In the comments of the post, she explained, they said we could have got in trouble because it was private property. She continued, her monster was tripping, I guess. I took that to mean that Billy's stepmother, Takesha Williams, demanded the memorial be removed from her property. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. People in the chat caught it. Who made the welfare check? The welfare check was made by an unnamed person. Quote unquote. An unnamed person. Somebody saw something and said something and that I'm okay with. They wanted to remain anonymous, but I can tell you it was either one of two people. It was either probably a neighbor or it was a family member who knows how jacked up this situation is. Okay. That's my guess, but we're going to talk. Let's dig a little bit deeper. The biological father, let me see if I can get his face back up on the screen for a moment. This guy, Billy D. Williams, his older sister, Alice, believes that her brother has been falsely accused. In a lengthy Facebook post, his sister, Alice, provided quite a bit of background information on the family. So here's the part that's gonna take a little while. His sister said, no one knows my brother the way that I do. I have been around him since he was born 
And when I say I have sat here and tried to think of a time that my brother has gotten mad or even raised his voice in anger so hard, I have tried and I cannot think of one. My mother is a single mother of 11 children who have grown up in the same household with me being the only one to have a bit of the street life because I chose to think I was grown and had to learn the hard way. Lord Jesus, tonight is going to be one of those nights, y'all. Oh, my Lord. Let me read this again. Let's back up. We hit the brakes. Let's back up. Let's. <laughs> Somebody in the chat caught it. Carletta caught it. Let's back up. Let's back up. Come on back, y'all. Come on back, AFC. Come back. Wusa. His sister, Alice, said, and I quote, My mother is a single mother of 11 children who have grown up in the same household with me being the only one who chose the street life because I chose to think I was grown and had to learn the hard way. <laughs> we could really dissect just that part, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that for now. Single mother with 11 children. Somebody please explain to me as a mother, as a woman, because we got a lot of women in the chat and maybe somebody can further clarify in the comment section. We know that black men are simps. They are sympathetic towards black women. Can we, can we agree to that just for a moment? Black men are sympathetic to black women and they usually acquiesce to what black women want, even though a lot of black women, hashtag not all, but a lot of black women can be difficult with black men, okay? And black men usually have to jump through a lot of hurdles in order to be with a black woman because a black woman would just put you through some shit sometime. It's just the truth, it's just the truth, okay? But how as a woman, do you allow yourself to get pregnant? Not once, not twice, not three times, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, not 10, but 11 times and you are still single? And tell me that what we're gonna do is we're gonna blame that all on the men. All these men were just sleeping with this woman and this woman didn't do a thing wrong. Cause y'all know that women in a lot of situations are infallible. If y'all don't know what infallible is, please Google it. Google it real quick. Infallible. They can't do any wrong. I don't understand how you are single with 11 children. How? How? <laughs> I'm gonna be like an Indian. How? <laughs> let's move on i told y'all i'm an asshole and i'm sorry i apologize i apologize y'all i apologize y'all click that thumbs up please share the stream let other people know that we're live guys it's about to get worse are y'all ready for it to get worse it's about to get worse each and every one of my siblings again this is the sister of that man each and every one of my siblings have always been really close I'm sure you have, ma'am, close in age, that is, but I digress. Even when they started having their own, their uh, children of their own and living their own lives, they have always stayed close. During everything together, doing everything together with their boyfriends or girlfriends and children, I don't even like the way that that sounds. Out of all my siblings, including myself, there are seven boys and four girls. Move on, Jay. Jay, just Jay. Move on. Stop making jokes. Move on. Okay, I got it. None of my seven brothers have ever sold drugs. She said has, but have is the appropriate. None of my seven brothers have ever sold drugs, hung out on street corners, joined gangs, been involved in any illegal activity, or 
even sag their pants. That's a good thing. My brothers were raised to be responsible, loving men, to work hard and take care of their family and to respect the law. Not to break the laws, not to be the stereotype of what people think of a black man or what a black man should be. Not to abandon their children and not to be disrespectful and not to abuse women. That's a very powerful statement so far, right? It sounds really good. And she said, she goes on to say, if anybody truly knew my brother, which is that man on the right hand side, they would know that my brother is a nice sized guy, but he is very soft spoken. He doesn't yell or get loud. Even when he is super excited, he doesn't talk loudly like I'm doing right now. He is always a very calm man and has always worked ever since he was old enough to work. He is and has been the sole provider for his family for a while now. Let me, let me say that again. He has been the sole provider for his family for a while now. Taking care of his two beautiful girls from a previous relationship, three boys that are older than his girls that are not biologically his, and a set of twins, one a girl, and his first boy, and then his wife. I need to take a drink for that. God, dog, that's a lot of information so far. That is a lot. Guys, that is a lot of sexual activity involved in this story so far, is it not? That is a lot of non-condom wearing, skeeting up in, and shooting up the club, producing babies, and just, whoo, it's a lot. That is a lot of information to try to grasp in a short amount of time. Now, he just purchased his first home at 30 years old. He works all during the week at a warehouse and he has maintained this job for a while now, meaning years and was working a 16 hour, sh working 16 hour shifts. That's a long time to be working. I don't know if he still does the 16 hour shifts, but what I do know is that his wife is a stay at home mother. Let me repeat that. His wife is a stay at home mother. Let me repeat that. His wife is a stay at home mother. Please implant that into your brain for a moment because this woman is making very, very glaring accusations at the father. And I want you guys to understand this was his child what would be his motive for abusing his child? And I want you guys to remember, we have a thing called hashtag mom's boyfriend. In those situations and those scenarios, what usually happens is the boyfriend is jealous of the mother who has a kid by another man. That man does not like that kid because that kid reminds that man of a man that that woman slept with prior to getting with that man. Did y'all catch that? I hope you caught that. So therefore, those men usually feel some kind of way about those cubs, all right? Just like they do in the Lion Kingdom. They usually feel some way about those little babies. So if you flip that scenario in this situation, if you follow logic, logic means you can put something here that makes sense, put it over here and it still makes sense. So let's flip that around and look at this situation. Let me get this beautiful family picture up on the screen if I can have y'all permission. Let me get this family picture up here. I'm gonna show you a picture of Billy and his wife right here. Matter of fact, I think I have a better picture than that. Matter of fact, I think I have a better picture than that one. How about that? Are y'all ready to paint a narrative? Are y'all ready to paint a narrative? Everybody got their paint brushes? Can somebody put in a, a paint emoji or a paintbrush in the chat. I don't know if y'all have that or not. Uh-oh. Sheila, do you understand where I'm coming from? Pamela, Miss June Bennett. Hashtag stay at home mom. Stay at home mom. Sole provider of the household. He bought his first home. He is the sole provider. He has a kid prior to getting with her. 
All I'm asking is what is the father's motive for abusing his kid? Then ask yourself, what is the motive for the mom abusing his kid who he had with another woman who he was having a lot of unprotected sex with before he got with his current wife? Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Are y'all getting mad? Are y'all getting mad? People out there in California, y'all getting mad at your boy yet? <laughs> I think the people in California one day, they going to catch me and kick my ass. Because I tend to go real hard on these stories coming out of California. <laughs> How about that for a narrative? <clears throat> We're getting ready to paint a narrative with our paintbrushes. And I think that there is more to this story than what this man being arrested actually says. Because I said to myself, if he's working 16 hour shifts, he just bought his first home, he's the sole provider of his family, been taking care of his kids, and his sister wrote down a long ass resume about how good of a man her brother is. He doesn't have a criminal record. He doesn't sag his pants. He is a loving, good father. He doesn't raise his voice. He's quiet. And to me, I would have to question this and say, that doesn't really sound like a, a motive for wanting to murder your kid. But the mom, in this case, which would be the stepmother, who doesn't have any connection with that other kid, probably feels some kind of way deep down in her soul about the fact that this is not her biological child and she because she loves him and wants to have her pleasure come from him probably feels some kind of way about that kid and cannot do anything but deal with it because she don't bring anything to the table where does she work at maybe she works maybe she does i don't know and nor do i care but it sounds like she spends a lot of time at home with his kid, huh? The, the stepmother spends a lot of time at home with his kid. He works all the hours. If you're working 16 hour days, that means you, you have to leave your kid with somebody and the logical person to leave your six children with would be the stepmom who ain't got shit else to do with her time. Damn. Now let me ask you guys another question while we're taking our paintbrush. We're painting on the canvas. We're painting a picture. And I want to see if you guys get the picture. Okay? How many of you guys have ever gotten frustrated if you have children, if you had one child, have you ever gotten frustrated trying to deal with a one-year-old or two-year-old or three or four-year-old? What about a seven-year-old? Have you guys ever gotten frustrated with kids at all? Well, let me paint some more for you. Let me, let me bring some more paint in. Let me, let me put some more paint. Let me paint some more of a picture for you. How many of you guys have ever gotten frustrated if you have not one, but two kids? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. How about this? Add a third kid to that. How about this? Let's go a bit further. How about now you add a fourth kid? Four different personalities. How about this? How about you add a fifth kid? Let's go a little bit deeper. How about you add a sixth human being to this scenario that one person has to deal with on a regular basis? Hello. What do y'all think about that? Talk to me. What do y'all think about that?
you get frustrated with one child or two children or three children or four children, six, you're going to get frustrated. And don't you think that logically it makes sense that you would get more frustrated, just a little bit more frustrated, just, just a, a wee bit more frustrated with a child that does not belong to you. And I can guarantee you, if he is a good father, like Alice, his biological sister said, that he more than likely still has a good working relationship with that child's mother. And what woman is gonna be satisfied and happy knowing that you didn't gave another woman all kinds of sex, had a, a great time with her physically, and you still have to deal with her because of this kid. Am I Picasso right now? Did I just paint a scenario for you guys? <laughs> Am I doing too much right now? Do y'all want to unsubscribe? Do y'all want to come kick my ass? You want to come find me out here in these Texas streets? You want to you want to come kick my ass? You want to pull up on your boy? Cuz I'm I'm just putting out the facts. That's a fact. Are you guys ready for a little bit more? Oh boy. Billy's aunt by the name of G Lisa or J Lisa, J E L EESA created a GoFundMe campaign to allow the family to give the seven-year-old girl, Billy, a fitting memorial. In the campaign, Jaleesa said, Little Billy, my seven-year-old niece, was taken from us on May the 23rd. My baby was a quiet, loving, and bright girl. I miss her little spirit. Her smile and her hugs, she was stripped of her spirit before she left this earth. My baby girl will truly be missed. That's what she said. That's coming from the aunt. Are you guys ready for some crazy information? Here we go. I'm gonna show you guys a screenshot of the GoFundMe. Let's take a look at this for a moment. Boom. My computer is going to lag a little bit, so just deal with it if you guys do not mind. And while you guys are here, please click that thumbs up. We have even more to talk about. I know this is getting crazy. I know that this is going to mess with some people's emotions. But we have so much to talk about here. Let's talk about this GoFundMe. <laughs> Jaleesa Williams is the aunt. Jaleesa Williams opened up the GoFundMe. Has anybody wondered yet where the biological mother is of this little girl yet? All I'm doing is asking questions. All I'm doing is asking questions, guys. As you guys can see on this GoFundMe, on this particular GoFundMe, they are asking for 10 thousand dollars ten thousand dollars and that's ten thousand dollars that these benevolent white people are going to have to come up with because you know it's not black people donating all this money it's only white people as far as the majority it's a white platform and mainly white people support what's on gofundme i know it's not every single person on gofundme but y'all know it's the majority of white people who Donate to your GoFundMe's. Let me not say the other word because I was about to, boy, I'm going to get in trouble tonight. <laughs> I'm going to try to be a good boy tonight, y'all, okay? Now, the aunt is asking for $10,000, not the biological mother, to bury her daughter. Huh? But the aunt. But are y'all ready to see something else? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen who are listening to the sound of my voice, we got almost 500 people here, y'all. Click that thumbs up. Guys, we need 400 thumbs up. Why can't everybody click that thumbs up? We got three or four people that want to donate, but we got 500 people here. We need everybody to click that thumbs up. Unmas, please, click that thumbs up. I want to see 400 thumbs up, and that's free. That don't cost nothing. Ladies and gentlemen who are listening to the sound of my voice, there were not one GoFundMe, but there were two. 
I had to take more time tonight to research this to make sure that I got it right. I said, there couldn't be two GoFundMes. I think what happened was maybe I looked this link up. Maybe it was a wrong link. Maybe it was something. No, I am positive there are two GoFundMes. Are you ready to see the second GoFundMe? Let's get it. Uh-oh. Want y'all to notice, this is GoFundMe number two. It says Princess Billy. Let's go back to this one. That says Justice for Billy. That's the same person talking about Justice for Billy, Little Billy Williams. Okay? This is GoFundMe number two that is asking for $7,000. God's just God's child justice for Princess Billy. This was created by a person by the name of Lorana Fish uh, Frazier. We are raising money to help support Billy Williams. I'm not going to read all this other stuff. Seven years old, who was brutally murdered and found dead in her home on Saturday, May 5th of uh, May, May, excuse me, May 23rd of 2020. This unfortunate, terrible loss has touched the caring hearts of many people seeking justice to be taken immediately into action. Why did they write it like this? I'm going I'm to I'm give black people a tip. I'm going to give y'all another tip if y'all don't mind. I'm going to give y'all another tip. If you're going to ask for this kind of money for $10,000 and $7,000, black people need to start paying somebody $100 of that GoFundMe money and write it out properly. I hate when black people don't use punctuation. They mess up punctuation. You can't read it properly. It's got horrible grammar. Pay somebody $100 of that GoFundMe money to write it out properly so normal Americans can read it properly, okay? Now, <laughs> to all who can help us raise awareness on stopping child abuse, please help fund hashtag 2020 love me stop child abuse and loving memory and God's honor for us to love one another and not despise God's little ones. Oh my Lord. Yes, two different organizers. I don't know who Lorana Frazier is, but I do know that the other GoFundMe was set up by the aunt whose name is Jelisa Williams. Two completely separate GoFundMes that total an amount of $17,000. One GoFundMe for $10,000 is supposed to help bury this little girl, which if the father was a good father, let me, hold on, hold on. I want y'all to remember for the people who are listening, I want y'all to remember that the aunt said that the father right there, Billy D. Williams is a great provider for his family. He is the breadwinner for his family. So if he works at a warehouse and he works 16 hours a week, then what does that mean? That means that he probably has insurance that he can buy by way of his job. And if he has insurance, then he probably has life insurance. If he has life insurance, then guess who also probably has life insurance? I don't know if she does, but what I'm telling you guys is there is a probability that little Billy Williams, the seven-year-old girl, might have life insurance by way of her responsible, hard-working father. But do you think they're going to mention that? If he's a good provider, then a good provider would also have life insurance on his kid. That means if this little girl passes away, which she did, then that means a life insurance policy would indeed kick in by way of his job, right? 
Not only does that mean that they could potentially be getting this child taken care of for her final expenses, but what that also means is they're asking for $10,000 for a freaking GoFundMe, and you have a second person by the name of Lorana Frazier who was asking for $7,000. And people are just throwing and pissing away all of this money on all of these GoFundMes and nobody's asking any questions. I'm going to point something else out to you guys about this GoFundMe that I thought was pretty interesting. I want you guys to notice out of that $7,000, how much of that $7,000 was raised since this GoFundMe was put up? This GoFundMe was created four days ago. <laughs> four days ago. How much money has this GoFundMe raised in four days? Does anybody want to take an educated guess? I don't know if you guys can see it on the screen. Right there. In four days, Lorana Frazier's GoFundMe collected a grand freaking total of $50. $50. I'm just saying, if I was, hey, if y'all donated me $17,000 by way of a GoFundMe, I promise you, I, I'll give, I'll get you, I'll get you something with it. I ain't gonna just give you no damn lip service. That's for damn sure. They are just, they are just throwing away so much money in these GoFundMes and there's so much good stuff you could do with it. It really is. But let's move on with this story. Please click that thumbs up, guys. We're still short of our goal. We got 243 thumbs up. We need 400 thumbs up, okay? Please click that, that thumbs up. Now, at this little girl's vigil, not visual, but vigil, on Sunday night, her cousin by the name of DeAnthony Reeves spoke with reporters and said, I just want her to be remembered as a sweet young girl, and she didn't deserve this. She's definitely in a better place. It's sad for us, but she's in a better place. I want you all to know that she is a loving and caring little kid. Now, Carolyn Bryant, who was Billy's great grandmother, told reporters, we just want justice for her by any means necessary. We just want justice, she added. She was a sweet baby. Billy's aunt, by the name of Selena Tate, told a reporter, the same thing, basically. She said she was a cheerleader also. Carolyn said of her grandson, Billy, this is very much of a shock. He grew up and never got into any trouble. So she's seconding what the sister said. Just an innocent, humble young man. She also said, we pray to God to get us through this. This is a horrific thing to get through. Now, some of the family members claim the household has a history with child protective services and prior allegations of child abuse. Uh-oh. I'm gonna read that again. Hashtag not my words. Some of the family members say that this household that that little girl was in, his household, has a history with Child Protective Services. How many of you guys are surprised by this? The criminal complaint filed by Billy indicates some of the children abuse charges against Billy Williams are for children other than the seven-year-old girl. A cousin of Takesha Williams, who is the wife of the father of that little girl, I know that's a lot to follow, Posted on the uh, posted on Facebook on May 25th, and she said, "My heart is literally broken. My cousin is married to the dad. I used to live with them when I first moved to California after I graduated. I stayed in the front of the house with my little cousins, and my big cousin and her husband stayed in the back. I shared a room with the seven-year-old girl Billy. Whenever I would come home from work." She would tell me she hadn't ate yet or she hadn't eaten. So I would always go and get her food. 
they would have her locked in the bathroom drinking toilet water. Yes, you guys heard that correctly. I told y'all this was about to get worse. <clears throat> and y'all tell me that this stepmother didn't know nothing about any of this. I'm going to read it again. A cousin of the wife said, when I would come home from work, the seven-year-old girl would tell me that she has not eaten, so I would always go get her food. They would lock her up in the bathroom, and she was forced to drink toilet water. How many times in 2020 have we told this exact same story? Does anybody in the chat want to take a guess? How many stories y'all have listened to that sound exactly like this? Anybody? That sounds exactly like this. Anybody want to take a guess? They had this little girl locked in the bathroom, which means that she was probably being starved and she was forced to drink toilet water. Now, if the biological father is at work and this cousin gets off of work and she's living with them and she sees this, then who do y'all think was responsible for locking the seven-year-old girl in the bathroom? Uh-oh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh. Did y'all see me spin around in the chair? I don't know if y'all got a chance to see DJ Just J spin around in the chair. You know why I spin around in the chair? Because that means that we are going to have to spin this narrative. I think we might have just spent this story and we have an eyewitness, an eyewitness who came home and said that they saw that this little girl has not eaten and she was locked up in the bathroom. Now, if the dad is at work, then who was responsible for locking this seven year old girl up in the bathroom? Come on, man. Somebody talk sense to me. Come on. Come on, y'all. Please, somebody talk some sense into me. Maybe DJ Just J has this wrong. I'm not going to lie. Maybe I have this wrong. Maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm just spitting out a bunch of stupid narratives that don't make any sense. How does the wife, Takesha Williams, how does she not know? How do you not know? But you know what I think? I think her ass probably was the one who was doing this the entire time. But I'm going to throw a little bit more here in just a second. I'm going to throw a little bit more here in just a second. Let's get back into this. I ended up taking pictures and calling CPS on my cousin and her husband, and they took the two girls into custody. I can't believe they would give them back now. I, I can't believe they, they, I can't believe they would give them back now she is dead. So who do y'all think was the anonymous person that called the police and CPS to the house on this little girl being dead in the garage? I think we just found out who it was. It was Takesha Williams' cousin. And I admire Takesha Williams' cousin, not only for seeing something. Thank you. Pixie Chick got it. Thank you. Woo. That's why I love y'all in the chat. 
Hashtag, when you see something, say something. She saw something was wrong. She took pictures, thank God for smartphones with these awesome double, triple, quadruple cameras. You can get a wide angle picture. You can get a you can get a macro picture. You can get a close up picture with a whole bunch of megapixels. You can record 4K video with these phones. She took photos and called the authorities. Good job. Because she was trying to save the life of these children. There is absolutely no way that the wife didn't know anything about what was going on. But you see that they arrested the dad. But let's keep going because there's more. I know I told y'all this is a lot. Let's keep going. Got 500 people here, guys. We need 400 thumbs up. Please click that thumbs up, okay? Please click that thumbs up. Please share this story. She took pictures and called CPS. Now, on May 26, the San Joaquin County District Attorney, I hope that's how you say that word, Tori Velber Salazar announced that Billy D. Williams, who was the biological father, will be arraigned the following day on charges of torture and abuse in his own daughter's death. Markedly, uh, markedly absent was the murder charge, but DA Salazar added, this remains an, an, an open and, and active investigation, and we are working with Stockton Police Detectives, Children's Protective Services, and the Medical Examiner's Office to ensure that justice is served in this case. As the investigation proceeds, and once the medical examiner determines the cause of death, additional charges can and will be filed as warranted against any persons responsible for the death of this young girl. And I'm telling you guys, this is just the beginning. I can almost guarantee you there's going to be more. I think, I think his wife, Takesha, is going to be arrested too. There's no way that she didn't participate in this. No freaking way if he's working 16 hours a day and she got her mixed, light-skinned looking ass sitting at home with six kids and she didn't abuse them kids. Come on, get, get the hell out of here. Come on, come on now. Because of this coronavirus stuff, Billy D. Williams was arraigned in uh, on, in court on video by uh, May 27th on one count of felony torture and six counts of felony child abuse. The complaint filed against him in the Superior Court of California, County of San Joaquin, alleges in part unjustifiable, unjustifiable physical pain and mental suffering. He is currently being held in the county jail, I'm not going to even say that word again because I know I'm messing it up, in the county jail with a bail amount of $2.2 million. He was assigned a public defender and his arraignment was continued until June. And I'm going to tell you guys, to the family of Billy D. Williams, not the real Billy D. Williams, but the Billy D. Williams, this biological father, y'all better go get a real attorney. Go get that man a real attorney, because if he uses a public defender, he is going to be <laughs> right where the sun don't shine. I'm telling you right now. Family members outside the Stockton County Courthouse protested Billy's arrest, believing instead that his wife, Takesha Williams, should be the one who is behind bars. Billy's cousin by the name of Danielle Bailey told the reporter the family had not seen or had any contact with the children in months. Some family members hadn't seen the family in years because the stepmom didn't allow the father's side of the family to see them and to have a relationship with that little girl. I want y'all to keep in mind that this is the same, the same wife, the same stepmother, when they tried to put up a memorial for that little girl because she was dead, they said they got to take the memorial down and move it somewhere else because she didn't want it on her property, which is technically, legally, probably partially her property, but it's the property that the biological father got that that bitch got to live in comfort in.
Billy's mother also spoke outside the courtroom and she said, I just want to know what happened to my baby. She had a fun and beautiful spirit. She's loving and she didn't deserve this. She didn't. She blames to Takesha for her daughter's death. We put our trust in her and she failed my baby, so she has to go. Why didn't they give the mother's name? So for the people who asked who the little girl's biological mother's name, they just said her mother. They didn't actually say her name. So for everybody who's concerned, including the biological mother, why don't y'all and the cousins and the family and friends, why don't y'all put y'all money together and not only make sure that this baby is buried properly, but y'all need to make sure and get Billy D. Williams, the biological father, a proper attorney. He is going to be screwed if he has a public defender. Screwed. Especially in California. I want y'all to remember what California is. Are y'all ready to take a little history lesson? California is the place where the war on drugs originally started. Do y'all remember the three strikes law instituted by the president that y'all love? Y'all love him so much. Who was that? The president that y'all said was the original first black president. I'm not going to even say his name, but was responsible for making sure that the three strikes law got instituted whenever they decided to have a war on drugs when the war on drugs started because they got drugs into California because they were trying to fund an illegal war. Oh shit. Oh shit. Did DJ just get into some conspiracy theories? Maybe they're not theories. Maybe it's true. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. This is the same state. Just thought I'd throw that out there, but let's move on. I don't want to get my channel flagged. I don't want to get my channel flagged. I don't want to get flaggied on my channel. So let's move on past that. Okay. Now, everybody is blaming the stepmother. Billy's mother, Maddie Palmer. So there's her name. Somebody write it in the chat. Her name is spelled M-A-T-T-I-E Palmer. P-A-L-M-E-R. Maddie Palmer. That's Billy's mother and hasn't seen him since his arrest. <clears throat> or is that, I don't know which Billy they talk about. It's too many Billies. They got the same name. I'm sorry. But she told a reporter, she just wants to see her son's face. Okay, so I guess that's the, the father's mother's name. Sorry. Lord have mercy. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Police have said to Keisha Williams, who was Billy's stepmother, is cooperating with the investigation. The DA's office said they cannot comment on the stepmother because of the ongoing investigation. And anybody who has information on the little girl's death or prior abuse should contact the Stockton police at 209-937-8377 or investigations at 209-937-8323. Let's go ahead and get this fair use popping. And let me show you guys the news videos because there was a lot of those. I know y'all tired of listening to my voice. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. If I can get this off the screen. Real quick, here we go. And the Memorial Day weekend became a nightmare for a family in North Stockton. A seven-year-old girl was found dead in her home. Her, the girl's father, has now been arrested and charged. ABC 10's Kurt Rivera has the latest. One aunt described her as a sweet little girl, always with a smile on her face. But the life of seven-year-old Billy Williams was cut short early Saturday morning at the North Stockton home she lived in. Our officers responded out to the residence to conduct a welfare check on the seven-year-old girl and when they got to the house when they were looking around when officers went inside the garage they found her unresponsive and medics were called to the house and unfortunately she was pronounced deceased 
under arrest, the father, 30-year-old Billy Williams, for homicide and assault on a child resulting in death. We don't see these type of cases all the time in our city, uh, but anytime we hear of such a case like this, it's just disheartening for everybody involved. One neighbor who didn't want to be identified said the family has lived here about six months. They were quiet, and their kids played with other neighborhood kids. So they only lived there for six months and had CPS called on them? Ooh, wow. Boy, something was going wrong there. I don't know what the police know, but something is really, really wrong with this picture. But let's keep going. Also in the home Saturday morning, five other children taken into protective custody by CPS. The stepmother was home too. Police say she has been interviewed by detectives as well as the biological mother. We were out in that neighborhood, out of that house all day yesterday to the evening hours processing the crime scene with crime scene detectives and our field evidence technicians collecting evidence um, just because we need to gather as much as we can so that we can have a successful prosecution. A Stockton man behind bars tonight accused in the death of his seven-year-old daughter. CBS 13's Heather Jansen is in Stockton with how family is reacting tonight. Family of this little girl tell me they're absolutely heartbroken tonight as they try to process what happened here this morning. Just her smile, her sweet little smile. That's all, that's the only thing she did. These photos show a smiling seven-year-old. Well, when she was around us, she was happy. And that's how family of seven-year-old Billy Williams say they'll remember her. Not wanting to be identified, they tell us they were shocked to hear that she was killed. We've been crying all morning, me and my family. Like, it's very heartbreaking. First responders showed up to this Stockton home, a sad scene where little Billy was found dead. Stockton police tell us they've arrested Billy Williams, little Billy's dad, on homicide and assault charges. That's just very disheartening. And everybody's wondering the same thing, is how could this father do this to a small daughter? Those are questions family want answered, too in disbelief that their family member would be capable of something like this, hoping and waiting to learn there may be more to the story. And I'm not trying to make my brother look like, you know, no angel or nothing like that. But from what I know of my brother, he's a really sweet person. Moving forward, they're grieving the loss of a young girl taken away from their family too soon. How was she going to be able to cry? How was she going to be able to cry out for help? Stockton police say this is still very much an active investigation and are asking for the public to come forward with any information on this that they may have. Good family. Again, to the family, if any of the family in California is listening right now, y'all better put y'all heads together. I know some of y'all got to be working. Y'all better put y'all finances together and get that father some private counseling. He better not talk to a public defender because if he does, I'm telling you, he is screwed. How many of y'all think that he might be innocent? Because I think he didn't, I don't think he's as guilty as what they're saying. I think that you had to have known something was wrong, but I don't think he's guilty in the way that they're trying to portray it. But let's listen up. Devastated and distraught after a seven-year-old girl was found dead. Her father arrested tied to her death. Now the girl passed away on Saturday and for the first time tonight, we're hearing from the victim's grandmother. CBS 13's Laura Hafley has her message and new details in the case tonight. A seven year old. Let me give a shout out. We have, um, we had, she said, that's my niece. So you guys, please just pray for our family. Now that I can promise you, we can, we will do that for you. So to, to the young lady who's in the chat, and I want to welcome you to the AFC platform. I want you to remember that we advocate for children first. And normally in these situations, I would normally go really hard on a man that's put in this position, but this is a rare moment for us, a rare moment where I think that he's being falsely accused. Y'all know I do not say that very often at all. Somebody in the chat, please tell her. I never say that. I think he might be a hell of a lot less innocent than what they're trying to portray. Something else is wrong here. Something is really, really wrong here. Let's keep going. Girl's life ending way too soon. Family members now desperate for answers. How did this happen to little Billy and why? It takes a village to raise a child. I just tell her I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry too. I'm sorry. Jaleesa Davidson's niece, seven year old Billy, found dead inside of her own home Saturday. The teachers, everybody, the CPS workers, the family members. 
I wish we all had a step, but we all failed her. Police arresting little Billy's father, Billy Williams, hitting the 30 year old dad with several charges, arguably the worst of which torture. She said it's about Billy. I said, what is it? And she said, Billy's gone. The child's grandma claims she was told by little Billy's mom how the girl was killed and said that Billy was drowned. The coroner has not confirmed a cause of death. And everybody's wondering the same thing is how could this father do this to a small daughter? But family members don't think he did. It hurt, it hurt, and I knew my son didn't do it. And the family members say in the midst of the shelter at home order, there was no way for anyone outside of the family to spot abuse. Because now, oh, don't hit her too hard. You know, she got to go to school tomorrow. There's no more school. That was a big impact on why Billy is gone because that abuse went further. And now they're just waiting for answers. I just pray that they uh, find justice. But if you could say one more thing, you have one more chance to say something to her, what would you say? Ooh, I would tell her I love her. And I would just grab her and I don't know, just leave, go leave with her. And so far, no word yet from Child Protective Services as to whether or not there was a history of abuse in the household. A somber and emotional night in Stockton. Family and friends gathering to remember a seven-year-old girl found dead this weekend. Tonight, her own father in jail accused in her murder. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marley Ginter. CBS 13's Ryan Hill is in Stockton with the message family members have about this heartbreaking situation. You could feel the sadness and the pain from everybody who came out here to this candlelight memorial for that seven year old girl. You could see people are just now wrapping up, cleaning up this memorial. But everybody who is here who lit a candle wants to know why this little girl with the infectious smile was taken so soon. Please take me to the king. She was robbed for her life. She was robbed for her innocence. Carolyn Bryant is a great grandmother with a broken heart. I can't find worse. The only thing I can find is pain right now. It's never easy saying goodbye, but saying goodbye to a little girl just seven years old is even harder. She was 11 and carrying a little kid, and she definitely didn't deserve this. Those who cared for and loved little Billy Williams came together knowing this sweet girl is gone. I couldn't believe it, and I didn't know how to stomach it because I know my cousin Billy and I know his wife as well. It just don't sound right. The little girl was found dead inside her family Stockton home Saturday. Her father, Billy Williams, is accused in her murder. Police say he's accused of torture, willful cruelty to a child, possibly causing injury or death, and battery charges. Something that baffles little Billy's family, not believing this is something he could ever do. I don't, I feel like nobody would deliberately do something like this. Very much a suck. He grew up, never been in trouble. Just an innocent, humble young man. Hearts are broken in a family, only hoping that they'll find out what happened to little Billy as they heal together by candlelight. Just peace and comfort for the family right now. And just, you know, we pray to God that he get us through this. This is this is a horrific thing to get through. The Stockton Police Department says that. And I want y'all to keep in mind that the stepmother didn't even, she didn't even have the decency to just say, okay, let's get through this. Let's figure out what happened. She was so vain and only cared about her feelings and didn't give a crap about this kid so much that she told the family that they needed to take this memorial and move it off of her property. Think about that for a moment, how incredibly insensitive that is. Let's keep going. But there were signs of abuse on little Billy. The other five kids in that home were taken into CPS protective custody. A family video showing memories of seven-year-old Billy Williams. Have you ever been in love? Four days after her tragic death, her father by the same name in court by remote, arraigned on one count of torture and six counts of child abuse. Just a tragedy, something that shouldn't have had to happen. It was early this past Saturday when little Billy was found by police officers dead inside the garage of her North Stockton home. Also inside, five other kids and a stepmother. No one else was arrested. Justice for Billy! Justice for Billy! Family members were protesting the father's arrest, believing the stepmother should be behind bars. The family had not seen or had any contact with the children in months. 
some family members hadn't contact or seen the children in years. Wow. Why is that? Because the stepmom didn't allow the father's side of the family to be have a relationship with Billy. The complaint filed against Williams in part alleges, quote, unjustifiable physical pain and mental suffering. For now, he remains behind bars on a $2.2 million bail. The two people who are going to be most influential here are going to be the cousin who lived with them, who was old enough to, to apparently have a job, and she was coming back and forth living with them because she just moved to California, and the children who are old enough to be able to speak for themselves. They're going to be key in this. And so for the people who are asking, will they be interviewed? I'm going to tell you the answer is they better be. They better be. Yes, I think they should. But that's why this man has to have private counsel. He needs to have an attorney. So for any family members who are listening or if family members want to call in, I'll put my link in the chat so y'all can call in and tell me what you think. But y'all need to get this man private counseling. I think that he is not as guilty as they say he is. And there he is it's going to end up bad for him if they don't. If he rolls out with a private attorney, he's going to be screwed. A public defender has been appointed to him. He did not enter a plea. His arraignment was continued till next month. Vigil to 947. And I'm glad he didn't enter a plea. I'm telling you guys he is running out of time and they're going to pressure him to enter a plea. He needs to get private counsel. If he enters a plea, you want to know why I'm telling y'all this? Because with uh, with my guy Julius Jones out of Oklahoma City, he was on the uh, he was on the uh, what was it? What was that that uh, series? It was called the um, not the Last Stand. Maybe it is the Last Stand. But Julius Jones out of Oklahoma City had a private. Excuse me, not a private attorney, but he had a public defender and he is now on death row because of his public defenders. And he had every, every, it was so many loopholes that he could have got out of that murder charge and his public defenders screwed him. Public defenders suck. Mark my word. Public defenders suck. They all suck. Get a private attorney. Nine-year-old Stockton girl found dead in her home. Police arrested the father of Billy Williams and are charging him with homicide. Tonight, our Kevin John talked to family members who are trying to piece together what happened. While the family of seven-year-old Billy Williams mourns her and questions the reason why she was killed, the one thing that's certain is how much she was loved. Just take a look at the dozens of people who showed up to the vigil for Billy on Sunday evening. There was lots of embracing, tears, and even laughs as family members and friends gathered to remember the little girl. Her great-grandmother, Carolyn, describes the impact that little Billy had. That's a little girl that's gonna be missed so deeply. She's gone too soon. Can't hug her no more. Just only have memories now. Billy was found unresponsive in this home on early Saturday morning. Medics pronounced the child dead at the scene. The child's father was later arrested and charged with homicide and assault, a tragedy that leaves family members in disbelief. I was really surprised. I used to live with him a while back for like a year, and I've never seen no signs of any of them doing this intentionally. The Anthony Reeves is a cousin, and he said that he lived with them a while back too. So I don't know if that's the cousin that took the pictures and called CPS, or if it was a female cousin. I don't know. But it was some cousin that lived with them. And keep in mind, they only lived at this house for six months. Hashtag public pretender. Thank you. Can somebody put that in the chat? Hashtag public pretenders. But for now, all they can hold on to is memories of the little girl. I want her to be remembered as a sweet young, young girl. And she didn't deserve this. She's definitely in a better place. It's sad for us, but... She's in a better place. And while the family searches for some closure, they're anxious for the truth to come out. We just want justice for it. By all means necessary, just justice for little Billy. Officer Silva of the Stockton Police Department tells me that it's still an active investigation. And though the biological mother and the stepmother of the little girl had been questioned, neither have been arrested. Such a heartbreaking situation. Now, Stockton police tell us they don't see this type of case often. Of course, we'll keep you updated as we learn more.
A STOCKTON FAMILY IN MOURNING TONIGHT AFTER A SEVEN-YEAR-OLD GIRL WAS FOUND DEAD INSIDE HER HOME. THE GIRL'S FATHER, NOW ACCUSED OF TAKING HER LIFE AND IS ALSO FACING SOME NEW CHARGES. CBS 13'S RYAN HILL JOINING US NOW LIVE FROM STOCKTON WITH A MEMORIAL... TO THE PEOPLE IN THE CHAT, AND I'M SORRY, that I, I'M NOT TRYING TO IGNORE WHAT Y'ALL ARE SAYING. I THINK SOMEBODY IN THE CHAT SAID IT AND I THINK THEY'RE RIGHT. I THINK THE STEPMOTHER BLAMED IT ALL ON THE BIOLOGICAL FATHER. I think that's what happened because keep in mind, they said she's cooperating with authorities. I think that she was the one who said he did it all. It did. Don't make sense, man. I agree. It doesn't make sense. Memorial getting underway in less than an hour. Ryan. Yeah, Marley, that's right. This place went from being a crime scene to soon becoming a place of remembrance as this family has started to put out candles and pictures and balloons to remember this seven year old girl. Stockton police are saying that her father, Billy Williams, charges have been updated. Williams is now accused of torture, willful cruelty to a child, possibly causing injury or death, and battery of a person. CBS 13 is also learning from the police department that investigators found signs of abuse on little Billy. Stockton PD tells us that the five other kids in the home have been taken into CPS protective custody. We spoke to family members about this gut-wrenching experience once they heard the news last night. They tell us it's heartbreaking to say the least. We've been crying all morning, me and my family. Like, it's very heartbreaking. I wish as an auntie I could have been there more, you know? But we can't take that back. But I guarantee you, I'm going to be there. I couldn't be there for her in life, but I'm going to be there for her in death. Hmm. Police say that they have no other arrests at this time. This, uh, this candlelight memorial will get started at around 6 p.m. We are being told by some of the family members that they could be willing to speak about how they are all feeling, how they're reeling from this gut-wrenching experience, and we'll be sure to hear from them later. And, and again, if you guys know any of the family members, if any of the family members in this story want to use the AFC platform to tell their story, I'd be happy to have an interview with them. As long as I have time, I'll set it up. Just have them email me at the AFC at gmail.com. It's right here. The AFC at gmail.com. Or if they catch us before we hang up tonight, then we could do it live tonight. I will stay up if they want to talk. Let's keep going around this evening. One more video. KCRA 3 Stephanie Lynn joins us live from the scene of the crime with the very latest details from investigators. Stephanie. Walter, this remains a very active homicide investigation, and the crime scene is right here behind us. Now, this is the home where investigators found the body of that little girl inside the garage. Now, Stockton PD saying their primary suspect right now is the victim's own father. Tonight, heartbreak in Stockton for the family of little seven-year-old Billy Williams, found dead inside a home early this morning. So there were signs of trauma on her body. Stockton PD responded to this house on the 1300 block of Candlewood Way at around 444 AM to conduct a welfare check on a child. When officers arrived, they found Williams unresponsive inside the garage. First responders pronounced her dead on scene. I don't know the exact cause of death, but I have been told this was an abuse type situation and that she was severely abused. Family members shared these photos of Williams with us. Her grandmother saying this. My grandbaby was, when she was around us, she was happy. When we came over here to visit on a, a housewarming party, she wasn't so happy. She was sad. Like, you know, she wasn't playing or nothing, just standing to the side. The primary suspect in this case, the girl's own father and the man family say she was named after 30 year old Billy Williams. Stockton police arrested Mr. Williams on homicide and child abuse charges. Tonight, Mr. Williams' mother standing by her son's innocence. And I don't believe he's guilty. A heartbreaking case disrupting what investigators call a normally quiet neighborhood. Now, investigators tell us on top of the five children that were found inside the home at the time of this incident, the victim's stepmother was also inside the home as well when investigators arrived uh, at the scene of this crime. Now, P Stockton police tell us that the stepmother and the girl's biological mother are cooperating with them as they try to unravel the details behind this heartbreaking incident, Walter. Reporting live from Stockton, Stephanie Lynn, KCRA 3 News. All right, Stephanie, thank you. Meanwhile, anyone with information in in this case is asked to call the Stockton Police Department. We are also guys. I don't need my script for this. I'm gonna say it just like this. 
Um, if you guys want to call in, just let me know. Um, if they if they decide they want to call in, it was two people in the chat. If y'all want to call in, just tag one of the moderators or channel members and then tag my name and I'll see it in the chat. I want to close out by saying this. The biological father. This is one of those situations where I don't believe he is guilty of everything that they're charging him with. So I'll say this. I don't think he's completely innocent. And let me tell you why. Because this abuse of his daughter happened over a long period of time. Okay. This continued to be an ongoing theme for this house. And it wasn't the first time the CPS was called. Now, the thing that makes me question whether he was involved in this or not is because of the fact that he worked so many hours and he was the breadwinner. And for him to live in a house like that in California, knowing how high the rent is or your mortgage is in California, knowing how much those houses cost, my guess would have to be that he would have to dedicate a lot of his time to being at work just to be able to take care of that place. Being about the time he gets home, he's probably tired after working 16 hours. I couldn't imagine him really being too active with the kids. I'm gonna be honest with you. So I don't think that the abuse came from him, but on the flip side, for his wife to be basically in a situation where she has to be responsible for taking care of not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six children who are underage, that is a lot of stress on any human being, period. And I've seen where people have gotten frustrated with just one child, where a child was crying and they beat and murdered one child. And this woman is responsible for watching six of them. To me, that is a recipe for disaster. That's all I'm saying about that. And I think that what happened is not only did CPS get called before, so the fact that they've already had kind of some practice for this up until this point when people came in to question them about what was really going on in that household, then I think that the, that the stepmother already was prepared for what she was going to say. There was absolutely no way if she spent the majority of the time with those kids that she didn't know that there was abuse going on. And the fact that the cousin came home and said that that kid was locked in the bathroom and, was, and, was, and hadn't eaten and was forced to drink toilet water. Yes, you heard that right. Forced to drink toilet water and was locked in a bathroom. There is no way that this stepmother did not know that this happened. That way, that, so what that means to me that they, that means she either knew about it and allowed it to happen, or she was the one who did it. But she's not arrested as of this point yet. Why not? That testimony alone from the cousin should automatically make her a prime suspect. There is no way that this man did this alone. And I hope that he gets private counsel, because if he does not, I'm telling y'all, they're going to throw the book at him. And the person who I believe that did it is probably going to get away scot-free and live in his house that he worked to get. And his daughter is dead. For the family and friends and cousins and whoever else that knows something, if you saw something, I'm telling y'all, screw that no snitching stuff. This is not a snitch type situation either way it goes. But y'all definitely need to be saying something if y'all know something happened to this little girl and know that the stepmother was involved. Y'all better step up and say something because that man's life is on the line. This little girl has already lost her life. And I think it's even weird that some of the family members are talking about that they weren't able to defend her in life, but they'll defend her in death. But you know what? It kind of does make sense if the stepmother prevented them from being able to see that baby. How poetic is that? And to even be more insensitive, she said, get this memorial off of my property, move it somewhere else. That sounds like a very self-absorbed person who was callous and just don't flat out doesn't give a shit about that little girl because that little girl was conceived 
by another by his by her husband with another woman and they had passionate sex to create that baby and the images in these step parents heads are so screwed up y'all see so, so many times when the boyfriend and the and the uh the stepdads of these kids end up murdering the children so why in this case can we put it past the stepmother i don't think we can and i think there's a lot more to this story than what we're seeing right now and so we're going to have a part two a part three and a part four to the story because i'm telling you guys there's going to be a hell of a lot more coming up for this story may that little girl billy williams who was seven years old may her precious soul rest in peace to the biological father billy d williams 30 years old the biological dad brother you got some splaining to do and you got some fighting to do in court to prove your innocence and you better do a damn good job of proving to the jury and to the judge and to the prosecutor and to and to the rest of the world that you are innocent prove to us that we didn't get this wrong because your own wife has told a story against you and now your ass is in jail and your daughter is dead and we need to know something pretty soon we're going to give you guys more updates as the story follows. If anybody needs to contact me, email address is right here, the AFC matters at gmail.com. This is your boy, DJ Just J. I wear the shirt and they wear the badge in the chat because they're the AFC and we together are the AFC where we advocate for children first. That is our first priority, okay? From my heart to yours, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for your support. We'll see you guys on our very next stream. Don't forget, please make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. We need 500 people tonight to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates. This is what we do on a regular basis. Come follow us and see how we advocate for these babies. We're going to give them a voice until we don't have any more voice left. We'll see you guys on the next stream. Peace.